Good morning, Wilderness. Pastor Paul here with another Sunday morning worship. This week we are celebrating the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, so the ordinary lectionary 11, I believe. Um, <laughs> after a while, they all just start piling up. <clears throat> but uh, we are continuing in Matthew uh, and uh, our midweek services are continuing through Romans. So we are going to be kind of on the same track. If you were with us last week, and we talked about um, sowing seeds in good soil, uh, the different soil types. And this week, we're going to still be talking about planting, uh, but this week is about the, the, the good seed and the weeds. So the, the wheat and the weeds uh, this week. So it's a continuation of uh, Jesus's parable teachings uh, from Matthew for this ordinary time. Um, ordinary is the season in the church here. Obviously, this is not ordinary for us. <clears throat> A couple of announcements. Uh, first off, we excuse me, uh, are looking for always readers who are willing to provide a reading. Uh, so we've shortened service, so it's only one reading. Uh, and if you want to come to the church and record it, or record it at home and send it to me, uh, we'll make it work. So, uh, always looking for for readers. We have a um, uh, always, yeah, always looking for volunteers in the church. So, no surprise there. Also, as always, please remember to share your prayer requests in the comments below, uh, and uh, pray for. For those other prayer requests that you see there um, <clears throat> so we lift one another up in prayer obviously this week so yesterday we uh, celebrated the life of Bernard Jacoby uh, so we um, think of and, and are, are praying for the Jacoby family uh, as they uh, have put their um, their loved one to rest and we continue to hold them up in prayer uh, through this uh, time. And uh, also we continue to, to pray for our missing and murdered indigenous women, uh, for the justice is served, uh, for those who have been murdered, uh, for those that are missing, that they are found safely. Uh, so there's, unfortunately, um, it's all too uh, real of a situation for way too many of us so uh, we lift those up in prayer uh, and also uh, the continued difficult decisions being made by our school districts by uh, governors all of those leaders uh, on what the best course of action is uh, for returning to school how to do that safely um, <clears throat> personally i would not want to have to make those decisions uh, I wouldn't want to have to be uh, a teacher or uh, a student or a parent at this time because uh, I know no matter what happens there are going to be continued tensions and concerns so we lift up all those in uh, education in prayer uh, continue to, to pray for them uh, that the spirit would lead them to the the best and safest option uh, for returning to school um, what that's going to look like uh, as we the church uh, consider similarly how best to safely return to corporate worship worshiping together um, <clears throat> so we know that struggle and uh, that the, the decisions made are not made lightly so um, so that's all I have so I invite you um, we'll Begin our service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so we take time to contemplate that sin in our lives. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to join me in singing our opening hymn, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. The grace of our brother Jesus, the love of Patamaus, and the unity found in the, whole, in the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together, our Kyrie. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world. For the well-being of the Church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together our prayer of the day as found on your screen. O Lord, pour out upon us the spirit to think and do what is right, that we, who cannot even exist without you, may have the strength to live according to your will, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Service continues with a reading, with our first reading. The first lesson is from Isaiah, chapter 44, verses 6 through 8. 
Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me there is no God. Who is like me? Let them proclaim it. Let them declare and set it forth before me. Who has announced from of old the things to come? Let them tell us what is yet to be. Do not fear or be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? You are my witness. Is there any God besides me? There is no other rock. I know not one. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the servants of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The servants said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first. Bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. Jesus answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. And the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous shall will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of our Lord. All right, folks. Another Farming Sunday. This is obviously a continuation from last week. Uh, we had uh, the, the story of the various types of soil in which the seed was uh, scattered by the, the sower, who just threw, threw seed everywhere and wherever it landed. Uh, the various soil situations kind of determined how fruitful that seed was. This week, uh, we're talking about um, the good seed, the, the good grain, the ideal seed, and then the weeds uh, in, uh, in this week. And obviously, talking about that this is the evil one who plants, plants the evil seeds in, in the, the cosmos, the world, and uh, that it springs up alongside the good deeds, the ideal seed. Um, kind of sandwiched in between this, uh, so the, the parable and the explanation of the parable are two other stories as well, um, which will come later. The, the story of the mustard seed being planted and also uh, the story of the woman uh, who had uh, some leavening agent and she hid it in, in uh, three portions of wheat. And at the end, she had, all of it had turned into leavening. Uh, so the, the power of, of that to spread and uh, to grow. Uh, so sandwiched in between our, our parable and the explanation of the parable are those other uh, parables about God's word and God's people uh, and the, the fruits of 
of the Holy Spirit. All of that good stuff uh, in, in wonderful t farming terms that um, for some of us are going to be very familiar and others not so much. Um, I seem to have a pretty good, uh, pretty green thumb when it comes to houseplants, gardens, not so much. Um, but that's another story. So this week, last week we were talking about soil conditions. This week we talk about seed conditions. Um, so a clarification, uh, because in here it kind of sounds like, um, there are good seeds and bad seeds, uh, that the, the good seeds are the good people and the bad seeds are the bad people. And that's not really what this is saying. Uh, I had to check the Greek just to be sure. Um, but so the good seed is, is obviously the ideal things. Um, and it says that the, the bad seed, uh, in one part, it, you know, it does talk about that. Um, that this is the, um, the, the wicked deeds of the world, um, the, um, the negatives in our lives, and that those will be burned off in the, the furnace of fire, as it explains. Uh, now, the interesting thing with that is, is the Greek. It's not talking about individual people, uh, but that you know, the world is the field here, and that these things are being put out into the world, right? So if you've got some, some hippie friends that talk about putting out good energy into the world, that's kind of what's going on here. Uh, talking about holding on to that good energy and letting that bad energy uh, move on. Uh, <clears throat> and we also rely on knowledge of purification uh, practices that um, there are usually uh, some standard purification rituals by um, by flame, by water. Uh, those are some pretty common purification rites. Uh, and this one, obviously, we're using uh, flame as uh, a purifier. So, um, but we're not talking about getting rid of bad people, right? Uh, and and Luther was very clear on that too. That we are simultaneously saint and sinner. So we've got good seed and bad seed in us, and um, they kind of sprout up together. And uh, that you know, you don't find someone that's just good. You don't find someone that's just bad. Uh, that would make things pretty easy, right? In the end times, we we'll able to go. Yep, uh, Greg, Linda. Oh yeah, they're they're great. They're going straight to heaven. They're gonna hang out with Jesus. It's gonna be great all time. Paul. Ooh, nope. Fiery furnace, send him down, uh, burn him, burn his butt off. So, uh, I think instead, what this is really getting into is there are great things that we are uh, we are seeded with that grow within us uh, through the the power of the word, God's word, and um, and the teachings that we learn from the Bible, uh, from from following our our faith that. You know, we learn to care for our neighbors, uh, even when they don't look like us and act like us and all that. Uh, we learn to to think about creation and care for creation, uh, that we have been made stewards by God of of God's creation. So everything that we have, uh, our our clothes, our money, our our skills, our livelihoods, uh, the the very breath that we breathe, all of that belongs to God and we are just using it uh, we are being stewards of it and so in the the church world a lot of times we kind of emphasize that by saying uh, instead of how much of my stuff am I going to give to God uh, how much of God's stuff am I going to hold on to for myself uh, turning that on its head and so I think in this farming visual uh, we recognize that right that there are moments in our lives where you know it's this beautiful glimmering shimmering hopeful thing um, the good seed sprouts forth and sometimes it catches even us are off guard we go where the heck did that come from and um, then there are other times when 
we're trying really hard to be a better person and some evil nasty thoughts come into our head or uh, without even thinking we say something hurtful um, or even sometimes intentionally we say something hurtful and that's one of those evil seeds um, planted by um, by the the adversary the Satan the devil whatever uh, definition you want to give to it um, we see that in our own lives that uh, we've been planted with both and so this purification process is a means of holding on to what's good while getting rid of what's bad and uh, so through that process uh, that we will come out of it um, the verse 43 says the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father um, that this isn't something to to fear obviously some of us are going to have more to burn off than others uh, but that this is a good process and unfortunately it also makes it a little more complicated for us uh, because we look at others and sometimes it's it's really easy to see a garden that's just full of weeds um, but instead God calls us to see you know a patch of weeds that has good seed growing in inside it as well um, flipping the, the script again and we can't just dismiss someone else's garden patch because there's weeds in it that we have to instead look for and help to nurture that good seed that that everyone has within them we can't ignore the bad things uh, or we can't ignore the good things just because there's bad present so makes it difficult uh, but being a Christian isn't about making things easier it's about living better and uh, being able to get along despite those imperfections um, and I also want to uplift as well so the the Greek in there um, it's not just weeds in a, a wheat field uh, this is specifically a type of weed that looks exactly like wheat so it isn't until it starts fruiting, you know, that it's ready to be harvested, that you recognize, oh, that's actually not wheat, that's a weed. And so by the time you recognize it for what it is, it's too late. Um, and we see that in our own lives, too, in the lives of others, right? That there are actions that may seem really good. And upon reflecting on it, we go, hmm maybe that wasn't such a good thing you know that it uh, seemed ideal at the time but turned out not really to be so and on the other hand there are, are times when uh, someone's actions someone's words whatever um, might seem pretty pretty bad and go oh that is one nasty weed and then we find out oh actually no that was that was a good thing that was fruitful stuff that was given so uh, a word of, of caution that um, <clears throat> a reminder that it's not our job to pull out the weeds in the field of the world uh, that job belongs to the angels that the son of man calls forth to to do that process that cultivation um, that's not our job it's not a on us to throw out the weeds um, but to to focus on nurturing the good soil and the good seeds um, and also that you know we really have to can't be too quick to judge based on initial appearances um, just because just like that those weeds and, and the wheat um, they can look really similar and we just gotta kind of see what happens uh, what comes forth from that so on that note, um, I hope that all of you are, are having a good week, that uh, you find the good seeds in your own lives and are able to recognize the good seeds in the lives of those around you uh, and help them to cultivate those. So blessings, amen. And I invite us uh, to sing our hymn of the day, quite appropriate. Build us up, Lord.
Let us confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of the harvest, you sow the good seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ into your field. Help your church throughout the world to be both diligent and patient, full of resolve and gentleness, that our witness may be faithful to your intentions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of space and time, your whole creation groans in labor pains, awaiting the gift of new birth. Renew the earth, sky, and sea, so that all your creation experiences freedom from the bondage of decay. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the nations, teach us your ways, that we may walk in your truth. Mend the fabric of the human family, now torn apart by our fearful and warring ways. Guide us by your mercy, grace, and steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, you accompany those who suffer and are near to the brokenhearted. Open our hearts to your children who are lonely and abandoned, who feel trapped by despair, and all who suffer in any way. We pray especially for those we name aloud and in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the seasons, in the midst of summer, give us refreshment, renewal, and new opportunities. We pray for the safety of those who travel. We pray for those who cannot take the rest they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, those who have died in you shine like the sun in your endless kingdom. We remember with thanksgiving the saints of all times and places and saints close to us. We pray especially for Bernard Jacoby. Gather us with them on the day of salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, people of God, receive this blessing. May Patamawas bless you and keep you. May Patamawas shine on you and be gracious to you. May Patamaos look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit that makes us one. Amen and amen. Go in peace and sing with me our sending hymn,
come, ye thankful people, come. Blessings.